Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today, it's a little snippet, but what I want to talk about is One River makes one of the largest cryptocurrency trades in history and what that actually means to you and me. Now, obviously, this is a, a pretty good thing for the market in general. However, what does it mean uh, for the people that help them do this? What does it mean for the price? And what does it mean for the future as far as customer service to where you are probably getting your cryptocurrency? So we'll go over that in a bit. And it's just a little snippet I want to talk about. But let's just take a look at what's going on in the market today. Uh, real quick, it is January 6, uh, 10 a.m., uh, El Paso, Texas time. And uh, real quick, it is again, Bitcoin is about above 35,000, so not too bad. And then everything else is doing great. So I'm not gonna go into detail like I usually do as far as like with the market. Just know that uh, everything's pretty much up. Uh, let's see, anything down? That's a good question. Mm, not really. So, uh, well, that's down a little bit, but who cares, right? It's just that, just kidding. I own VET, I, I, hopefully it does pretty well. So uh, this is just one of these great stories as far as uh, institutional investing really coming in. Now, over time, uh, we have seen a lot of these institutions really FOMO in. Not really FOMO in. Uh, the first one was really was MicroStrategy, eh, Square MicroStrategy, but they were kind of like one, one of the first that really kind of came in and brought a lot of capital into this market. And uh, it's thankful because it shows every, every other uh, company what is, uh, what is available for them to do. So when I see other companies getting in, I'm just like, well, it's just one more, it's just one more. And uh, if this would happen in like 2017, 2015, 2014, I mean, we'd be much farther along than what we are now. But the track wasn't built for these institutions to really get in. They needed to have a lot of structure put in place because they're just not used to, you know, having a, a hardware wallet, doing all the custody services. I mean, it just wasn't, it wasn't available to them. And now it really is. And that's why I think 2021 is going to be a pretty good year. We just did a, a video this morning where I talked about this is the best time to be in cryptocurrency. I mean, if you missed out before, as far as like doing dollar cost averaging, you know, every single day when everything was boring, doesn't matter. Right now, I envy you uh, if you're here and you just got in. Oh, that'd be great. So what's going on here? Well, One River makes one of the largest cryptocurrency trades in history. So first of all, uh, One River, they are a hedge fund asset management, and they do a lot of different things with the financial industry. We'll go over uh, how much assets uh, they actually have under management, which really isn't that much from what I saw. But it was just interesting that they put this much money. I mean, they put a lot of money into uh, Bitcoin. So uh, One River has worked with crypto exchange Coinbase. Remember that name, Coinbase, to invest an undisclosed amount in cryptocurrency. We're going to tell you how much it is. According to Coinbase, which carried out the transactions, its purchase represents one of the largest digital asset trades in history. Now, keep in mind, when MicroStrategy did this, they did around $425 million, and they did it over weeks. And the way that they weren't, the way that they didn't make the market pump was they, they did these microtransactions because Coinbase wants to really put a time and energy into their institutional clients. They are really doing that a lot of, and I think uh, that's why things are suffering as far as the retail. So we'll take a look at that in a bit. So what they do is they do these little microtransactions, one every three to five seconds, and it could be a full Bitcoin, it could be a fraction of a Bitcoin. And that's how they're able to buy, you know, 400 million, 600 million, a billion dollars worth of cryptocurrency, and the price doesn't go up that much, which is a bad thing for us. But just remember this, at some point, they can't do that as much as they do right now. At some point, there's not gonna be anything left. And that's the great thing about Bitcoin. There's only, there's only 18 and a half million right now. And really there's 2 million lost. So I think there's like 16, 16 and a half million. And once all this gets bought up, all these little microtransactions, this stuff's gonna stop because they can only do so many of these, uh, you know, huge, enormous amount of microtransactions. I mean, they'll still do it but they're not going to be able to do the, the amount of transactions and the frequency because people like you and me are just sick of it. We're like, you know what? We're not giving up anything. And uh, if you want to grab something, we'll just you know step in line and take a number and I'll tell you what my number is later on because it's not going to be anything uh, fairly quickly. So I think this is one of those things where uh, time will win out. Okay, so... The initial trades were executed over a five-day period. So just imagine that, five days, and 
they got in X amounts of, of Bitcoin. And this is uh, Ki Young Ju. Uh, he is the, I think he's the CEO for Crypto Quant. And he just talks about there's, they have this service where they have all the data. Let me just blow this up because you can't really see it. Ah, there we are. So Bitcoin, Coinbase Pro Outflow. So this is going back all the way to 2018. And these spikes are when there's just a massive outflow of Bitcoin from the exchanges to either a wallet or to an institution or whatever else. And you can just see there's not that many of those. But if you take a look here, this is around March and April. Obviously what happened in that time, there was a huge crash. People want to take it all off, sure. Then you have these little uh, uh, increases. Here's July, 2020. And then August, this was when MicroStrategy did all their little magic right back here. And here's now. Now you saw a total outflow of 55,000 Bitcoin in a very small amount of time. And that is where all of these, uh, all these Bitcoin transactions actually took place. So interesting time uh, to be had. And then uh, scrolling down. I think this is, I mean, the rest of the article is interesting, but I got bored. So it's, and this is really the crux of it. Uh, it says, say it's holding these assets over the long term. And this is from um, One River's CEO, I believe. Yeah. Holding these assets, yeah. Holding these assets over the long term aligns yourself with the macro mega trends of technological advance and currency debasement, both of which appear to be accelerating. So why did I read that to you? What is so important about that? Well, what's important about this is that what he is saying is that we are not here to trade. We are not here to grab up a little bit, make a quick profit and sell. What we are here for is because there is so much money printing, see, because there are so much uh, problems in the world, because we can see exactly which way uh, technology is moving in as far as finance goes, this is what we've invested into, and we're here for the long haul. So if you um, feel that there's going to be a lot of Bitcoin around, you've got huge companies like this buying up. And you've had uh, Michael Saylor from MicroStrategy buying it up and going, hey, we're not selling. And I'm pretty sure Jack Dorsey uh, from Square and Twitter, I'm pretty sure his company isn't selling either uh, because they know exactly what's going to happen. This isn't a, an asset that's just going to go to like 50000 and just kind of teeter on that for the next uh, decade. Uh, it's going to probably move up pretty uh, exponentially. Uh, but again, only time will tell. And uh, this actually gets back to, to the main point, which is this. Michael Saylor talks about he has no respect for traders. I have respect for traders because I can't do it. And uh, I just I don't have the time or the patience or the intelligence probably to do it. But uh, there's a lot of people out there that do it pretty well uh, sometimes. But uh, what we're talking about here is that for everybody who's trading and they're like, ah, oh, great, you know, I made, you know, 50% uh, gains or 30% gains, which, which is pretty good. But if you think about the long haul, this is why I'm an investor. Every time you're selling your Bitcoin or your digital assets or your cryptocurrency, I mean, granted, you, you, you have to take some profit at some point, right? Things come up, you have to pay for bills, somebody gets sick, there's some other problems. I mean, you have an emergency fund, whatever, sure. But the lion's share, I don't think a lot of people should be selling. At least I'm not going to sell. I can't tell you what to do. I'm not a financial advisor. But every time that you're selling, every time that you're getting rid of something, it's not me that's buying up Bitcoin. Well, actually, it is me. I mean, I still do dollar cost average every day in the crypto. But the majority of who's buying are people like this. They are these big institutions that are just so happy that you're buying and they're waiting in the shadows. And they've got an unfair advantage, which is Coinbase, who is helping them to snatch up everything while you let it go. And uh, that is ex exactly what's happening. They are, there is, there is no love lost. They just are in it for the bottom line. And, and that's really what, what happens. So uh, just think about that when, when you're selling, when you're trading, whatever else. And if you want to trade, sure, go ahead. Have trade fun. Have a great time. Just don't do 100% uh, trading. That's just crazy. Crazy talk. So this leads me to my, to my next point, which is how much did they actually spend? Because in all these articles, it doesn't tell you how much it is. It's like just that it's the most in history, which is fantastic. But what does that really mean to us? Well, I found this article. This is December 18th from Bitcoin.com. These guys have the best, the best information. I love them. And it talks about how a billion in Bitcoin and Ether, one river hedge fund to increase holdings from 600 million. So they've already purchased 600 million back in the day, right? 
They've invested 600 million in Bitcoin Ether with a plan to increase its holdings to one, let me highlight that, one billion next year. So I think they just bought a billion dollars additional worth of cryptocurrency digital assets. And I don't know if it's all Bitcoin, but that's just what they bought. And then scrolling down, it talks about this. Um, one River was founded by CEO Eric Peters in 2013, and they oversee about, this is crazy, 1.6 billion in total assets under management. Uh, and then the CEO states this, One River Digital Asset Management has committed that will bring its holdings of Bitcoin and Ether to about 1 billion as of early 2021. So if they already put in 600 million, Okay, then for them to have the highest amount of all time, it's not 400 million because that would only be one, that, that would only be 400 million in one shot. And if you can take a look here at the Bitcoin treasuries, MicroStrategy, oh, it doesn't have any more, it's a bummer. But MicroStrategy put in 425 million in one shot. So I think they invested a heck of a lot more. But what's interesting to me is that for the assets under management, they have 1.6 billion. So unless they did a uh, C funding round or they did a, uh, they got a hold of a lot of their investors and said, this is what we're doing. This is gonna be a pre-investment and they, they raised a bunch of capital. They put a lot of money into cryptocurrencies and digital assets. So the, the question you have to ask yourself, am I at the right place at the right time with the right asset? And the answer is yes, yes, and yes. So I think if you just take a look at what smart money is doing, this is where you get your information. Now here's my last point, and I'll say like this. Um, there is one recurring theme, which is who is helping all these, these institutions? Well, they help MicroStrategy. They help these guys, and their names are Coinbase, and there's nothing wrong with that. I have, nothing, I have no problems with a business being a business and, and doing different things and uh, you know making a profit. That's the good old American dream, right? The problem is, is that when they do these types of things and they're really putting so much focus into the institutions, you get stuff like this. And I just had shown you this before. Um, it goes down, Coinbase goes down. And if you want to do any kind of trading, any kind of selling, any kind of buying, well, you're SOL. And then it's pretty funny because like it says the most trusted platform for trading crypto. And then of course uh, it's, uh, it's all down. So. Uh, that is no good. That is, a, that is a problem. And I think it's going to be a problem happening more and more and more. And it's one of those things that if you want to use Coinbase and you're new, have at it. But just realize that um, this is what me and Steve Ehrlich talked about. He's the CEO of Voyager. Uh, he's like, you know, some companies, Steve will never, Steve's, Steve's a good guy. He'll never pinpoint to a particular exchange. He goes, but some, some exchanges have moved on. He goes, if you don't realize that, so they are more so for the institutions and they are catering to the institutions more so and they're letting the retail fall by the wayside, then you just not just don't have your eyes open. It's essentially what he said. And, and I can agree. And this is the same thing that's going on. So underneath this video, in the description of every one of my videos, there's, there's the exchange of wallet fees as a link. Uh, it looks just like this. And when you click on that, it goes to all my recommendations. These are the ones that I recommend I personally use and I've been using for quite some time. And... Uh, I love them. So I kind of have a one-two punch. Voyager is my, where I buy everything. And then Celsius is where I send things to uh, because, whoa, a little bit too fast. Uh, so it can, it can gain yield. Now, some people always ask me, well, how much do you have in Celsius? Because, you know, not your keys, not your, or not, not your keys, not your crypto. So if you're putting it in another place, then it's not your crypto. Yeah, I get that. But uh, when you're getting like 8%, 9%, 10%, I mean, synthetics, I think is like 18% yield. Uh, you can't pass that up. So again, what I've always talked about, diversify. I'm not keeping 100% of my portfolio in Celsius. Uh, I used to keep 30, which I thought, which I reevaluated and thought that's a little, that's not a good idea, Rob. And uh, now it's 15%. So I have 15% of my portfolio in Celsius gaining yield every single week. And it's the easiest thing that you can possibly do. And uh, what I like about it is like Alex Mashinsky talks about, it's a flywheel. So if you put Bitcoin on there, you're gonna earn rewards in Bitcoin. So let's say I have one Bitcoin and then for the week you gain, you know, zero one Bitcoin or whatever it is. And now you have 1.01, .01, then you gain rewards of that, 1.02, 0.5, 0.7, and then off you go. So that's why I use Celsius and Kraken and all these different things. Now just notice that everything here 
is an, is an affiliate link. You don't have to use the link, you can go right to it, but just be aware of scams. Uh, but if you do use affiliate link, it's between 10 and $25 uh, Bitcoin that you can use. So eh, whatever you wanna do, it's up to you. And then lastly, I just wanna bring up that Coinbase. I've, I put this in, God, when was this? This was December 1st. And I said, first of all, um, sometimes it's, it's, it's just easier to have it on an exchange. So I'm never going to fault anybody for like saying, well, I just want to keep an exchange because it's easy. I got a lot of things going on. Okay. I mean, some people will say, well, you got to learn. You got to take it off. <laughs> Look, man, some people just are too busy. You know, I'm not for time. That's so fine. You want to keep it on there. Just be aware that it's not your keys, not your crypto. But I've always said, and I've said this on December 1st, there's something going on with Coinbase. There's too many outages. It's almost like it's being done on purpose because you cannot be that incompetent for that many years and not realize what's about to happen, especially with this bull run that's happening. I mean, if I know it and I'm an idiot, then you got to be able to figure it out for these four-year cycles. So if you keep going down and you didn't hire, if you hired more lawyers than you did programmers, then you got a problem. And that problem is going to relate to the retail customer. Now, they're pretty big. I don't know if it's really going to make an effect, but for me, I won't. If it's, a, if it's an all-out failure, I'll use them. And if I got to offload some things, sure, but it's not my first choice. That's all I'll say. Anyhow, so that's it for today's video. Uh, thanks for sticking with me to the end. I appreciate it. Uh, if you like these types of videos, then the two months going to pop up on your left and right. And uh, that is it for today. So thanks for sticking with me. Appreciate it. And uh, I'll see you in the next one.